It's not that I have confidence that gold will regain its preeminence. It has nothing to regain. Uh, because if we're going to say it's going to regain it, then it doesn't have it now. No. Gold is money right now. Meaning when you when you transfer any dollar or, uh, or yen or euro or whatever, what it is that you are doing is you are transferring a derivative of gold or silver. That's what you're doing now. Now, the, the question is not when gold will regain its preeminence, but when fiat currency as a substitute for gold and silver will lose its preeminence as the way to transfer gold and silver when making a transaction. Do I believe that gold and silver as gold substitutes will lose their preeminence for the, the main method of transferring real money, which is gold and silver? Yes, they will lose that status because statistically, every single gold and silver substitute that has ever been known to man in all of financial history has all fallen to zero. Rafi Farber stated that he doesn't believe this will be the first exception in world history. He isn't naive, and he's certain of that. The real question, he stated, is when and how it will happen. While the exact timing is unknown, he pointed out that for the first time since the late 1970s and early 1980s, the Federal Reserve, arguably the most powerful central bank and issuer of the world's reserve currency, is in negative equity. He stated that this means, for the first time since 1980, the assets on its balance sheet are losing value and those assets are primarily as treasuries and mortgage-backed securities. Farber stated that the value of these securities declines as interest rates rise, which is what's happening now. He mentioned that the U.S. dollar is chiefly backed by these assets' treasuries, mortgage-backed securities, and a small amount of gold in Fort Knox. As these assets lose value, the Fed has to pay more interest on the excess reserves it holds for banks. He noted that there's around $5 trillion in reserves, plus reverse repos, which is essentially excess cash that banks can't use, so they lend it back to the Fed, which in turn pays interest on those reserves. He also stated that the Fed is paying more interest while receiving less return on its assets, leading to financial losses. Farber highlighted one definition of hyperinflation as the moment when the desire to hold cash balances falls to zero. Another way he defined it was when the central bank that issues the currency goes bankrupt. He emphasized that it's not about the money itself, but rather the substitutes for money. When those money substitutes no longer substitute for real money and the value of those substitutes go to zero. That's the financial in definition of hyperinflation. The liabilities of the issuing central bank are worthless. And that's what happens to every central bank in history. No, no exceptions. None. They printed uh, so many uh, dollars since COVID and, and really since 2008 that there's all this extra cash that the Fed has to pay the banks on those reserves or the banks will have to try to loan them out into the economy. And that would be catastrophic for the dollar because then all of a sudden you'd have these trillions of dollars in the economy that weren't there the day before. And what happens to the value of the dollar then? I mean, it would just be, it would be unprecedented. Everything that's going to happen since 2008 is unprecedented, but it would just be another unprecedented thing within the unprecedented chain of events that's happened uh, the, the last 12, 13 years. And so they're paying the banks to keep them in and they're going to have to pay more and more and more. It puts them in an impossible situation. Either they suffer the losses on their balance sheet, which means that the dollars that they have to issue these banks to keep their reserves inside the Federal Reserve System, those dollars are literally unbacked. Because the dollars that have come into existence until now, how they come into existence is they buy treasuries. Like the Fed takes in the asset of treasury on its balance sheet and in return gives the liability of the dollar to whoever they're buying the treasury from, which is usually JP Morgan or some commercial bank. Right? So JP Morgan gets these reserves and the Fed gets an asset. But if the Fed has to pay interest on the reserves that JP Morgan already has, how do they bring those dollars into existence to pay JP Morgan? They bring them into existence with, without getting any asset in return. So there you have a truly unbacked dollar. That's where we are now. We're already going downhill. There's no way the Fed can stop its losses without printing more money and buying more bonds. That's what it's going to have to do. It's going to have to reverse interest rates. And we all know what's going to happen to gold and silver when they reverse interest rates, when price inflation, as they measure it, is around 10%. You know, everyone's going to say, oh, forget it. The dollar is gone. We're going, to, we're going to go to real money. That's what's going to happen. So it's one thing or the other. I mean, we see the Fed being sandwiched on both sides, both directions. 
either they lose money on their balance sheet or they destroy the dollar and they're running out of maneuvering room. It's just a matter of time, just waiting for that singularity to hit where they really cannot move anymore and everything explodes. And I think it's going to happen suddenly. When it starts to move, everyone is going to know at the same time what is happening. And we're not far away from that. I don't think we're years away. I think we're months away, despite what's going on in the gold and silver markets. We're experiencing a global bankruptcy. All governments are bankrupt. It hasn't revealed itself yet. Rafi Farber stated that usually what solves these problems are bankruptcies. He admitted that he doesn't know what the final straw will be, but he mentioned that the camel's back is loaded with garbage and something will eventually break it. He wished he knew what that straw would be so he could act when it hits. Farber stated that we are definitely going to see more situations like Sri Lanka. He mentioned that we've seen it before in Europe hyperinflation and impoverishment across the continent. He stated that it's going to get tough, especially for people who don't own real assets, and even for those who do, it will still be challenging. Farber said that even if you have all the gold and silver you need, it will be hard. But he emphasized that the goal is to make it easier for those who see what's coming. He then pointed to history, specifically 1973 to 1974, when Nixon closed the gold window. Farber stated that he doesn't like to say we went off the gold standard because we never really did. He pointed out that there's still a gold standard and dollars are still exchangeable for gold. In 1973, we experienced the oil embargo and food prices jumped 20% in a single year. He said there were real fears of hyperinflation at the time. What did gold do between 1974 and 1976? Farber stated that it fell by about 50%, and everyone was asking, why is gold falling when prices are going up? He said the answer is, yes, it's insane. But did it last? No, it didn't. He stated that between 1976 and 1980, gold quintupled. According to him, reality is still reality. The foundation of all money and money substitutes is still gold and silver, and that will never change. He mentioned that he hopes we're in a similar situation to 1976 now. Farber stated that he believes we're close because the Fed is being cornered, and once it runs out of options, the metals will have to move.